So we gotta get this truck apart. We gotta, this amp staying, the epicenter staying. Uh, we're going fully active. So the crossovers are being removed in the process. We're gonna move this amp to another location. We're gonna add another sound digital amp in there. The high low has to come out, like you said, like I said before. Um, we did this car and we wanna do everything high level into the sound digital, which works fine. Uh, but now we gotta do the um, DSP and we're gonna put the Hertz S8 DSP. Um, and this will work in motorcycles. I've done in motorcycles and this also works in cars. So we're gonna get all this stuff torn back down and reconnect it to make it all work. So we'll get there. We'll get it all dialed in and figured out. So we'll take some video of a time lapse and go from there. So we pulled the amps out, we pulled the crossovers out. Now we gotta put the DSP back in. With the, I'm sorry, put the DSP in uh, and the two amplifiers. I just gotta figure out how it's gonna fit in here uh, physically. I mean, the distribution block has extra stuff on it, so we'll make that work. Just gotta run all the wires, clean it up. And as you can see, we uh, ran new wires to the here connection. So like I said, two amplifiers, D uh, sound digital. They're both 800.4s, Evo X2s. Uh, like I said, one's gonna run, that one's gonna run the tweeters and the rear doors, and that one's gonna run the mid-bass, only bridged. Uh, we're gonna have to change some levels and stuff like that. Uh, so it's not horrible from here. Uh, it's just getting it all set up, and then I'll show you how we set up the software for the Hertz DSP using the computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by setting all the pre all the settings flat. Uh, we turn the clock, clock uh, the, the lights off and everything like that. We plug a USB in. In this section here we got to set the software up uh, let's see if we can get it to all the work so we're gonna go to USB here USB let's see here audio let's go to source let's go to USB so once again we're gonna start with the input set up here we're gonna um, we're gonna make the rear inputs tweeter and woofer here we're going to make this three and four and we're going to make this like that and then we're going to take the soa for output left and right we're going to give it a custom output and we're going to go next and then we're going to put it on track one start over we're going to turn the volume up to say 20 in this case because i know these radios have some funky outputs but 20 is where they really start out and have some good sound and we're going to hit input here next Now it says, please set input sensitivity to avoid clipping on track one. So if you notice up here, there's sensitivity adjustment signals up here. So we're gonna go up until we get to red. See how it's clipping red? I mean, probably wanna go one down. Should be blinking like that. And we're gonna do the rears. And sometimes the rear is, is, is sometimes lower output than the front. So we might have to go one click up. Now let's, in the case of this. Let me try one more. So now you can see, you can see 
the front output is higher than the rear output on the input side. So that's how you adjust the input sensitivity on something like this. Then you go next. And then it's going to tell you throughout the apply to equalization and DSP useful for not flat head unit. We want to go to the next one. Now we're going to go through all the input staging. You can go through and EQ the setting based on what's going on. So we go back here. Through the next step, you can apply an equalization at the input stage. The thing. This input equalizer is useful to correct not flat OEM head unit speakers. Skip the procedure if you don't want to set the door. So let's skip it. I'll go into EQ on the back side. So now the unit's configured. Now we can go through and set up the crossovers. And we can go here and we can change this. We'll just do pink noise. Just for our killing time. So now the amp still has some hits, so we'll go back and adjust the gains based on what's going on. So we're gonna do um, Link What's Riley for the tweeters. We're gonna do those, since these are some really big tweeters, uh, let's, let's put this in, let's see here, let's go into expert mode. Let's see here, let's find the expert mode. Let's close this. Close, let's go back. Let's see here, close. Now let's go here to settings, let's see if we get here. Let's see, working mode. Now we want to go to expert because uh, we're experts. Now we can adjust the crosshair points however we want. So we're at link with Riley and the tweeters. Now we on oh, this tweeter anyway. That, that did both, so let's see here. So we, now we can go to, we can change that tweeter. So let's say we go down to, these are really big tweeters. So let's say we go 2773 on both. Okay, and that we want to make sure that 24 dB per octave. That's what I like. And we can always change the crossovers. And then we're gonna do band pass. So the, the high pass was gonna be 2773. And we're gonna do this at 80. And you can always go down depending on what your software like. Let's say 70, 730, and we do 24 dB here. Now oh, we gotta make sure we change this to Linkwitz Riley. Linkwitz Riley here. I'm gonna do 24 dB here. 24 dB here. And then we're gonna do the rear speakers. We're gonna do Linkwitz Riley there. And we're gonna do those at 24 dB. Um, we just confirm that both sides are the same and do the subs that we'll do 80 Hertz Link what's Riley we'll do 73 At 24 DB per octave And right now it's in a bandpass solution right here, so that's why you see this 20 Hertz at Butterworth and we can go down to zero which would make it a a no, just a low pass alone. And if you wanted to do a, um, a band pass, you could do it that way. And that's how you would do it. Um, so we're going to play with the gains a little bit. See if we eliminate some of that hiss. We got equalization here. So and then we're going to set up the equalization on this car once we're all ready to go. So let's finalize it for the time being. <coughs> we're going to finalize it. Oh, let's... Let's do this. We'll finalize zero dB. And we're gonna finalize it. Then we're gonna go adjust some gains and get rid of some of that hiss, because right now the amp does have some hiss. It's really uh, those amps are really got some cool stuff in them, so but we'll figure it out as we play around with it more. So we had to make some adjustments. I uh, actually had the inputs wrong, so it had no base. So I went back through, corrected the inputs, got the signal right, uh, and got everything else going right. And then we got all the thing to turn on correctly the way we wanted to. Um, and the system itself, we RTA, that's what it looks like. 
without any equalization. So we got some we got some work to do. Um, take some pictures of it, maybe add it to the video a little bit later on. But we'll go from so, there. I got a little time to tune this EQ on this this S8 on in a car. I've done it in bikes, and bikes it seems to be really good at it. Now, if you were to ask me to, for, about my opinion of this DSP, I think it's a it's a very good ESP from the standpoints of operational, but it's very limiting. And that's probably why the price reflects what it is. It's not really an expensive DSP, but it doesn't have 32 bands. It has, um, each channel has six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 15 or 16 bands. And um, it's very, it's very nice and very simple. You can do a lot of things. You can trick with it. You can address some signal issues. Um, you can also de-equalize it a little bit if you want to do it manually. Uh, it's kind of like a lot of DSPs from the standpoint of um, the input adjustments, um, but it's not a bad DSP for the for the person who wants to start off with something simple. Uh, if you really want something super powerful, uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. Helix, Hertz, upper models, the H8, uh, which is a little bit better. It has a little bit more power from the standpoint of operation. Uh, if you want to stay in the Hertz family, then Audison, of course, and then you've got the Alpine's actually a really good DSP. Uh, so it's it's really cool. So what you see in here is what I did was I um, did a, I did an active system, crossed it over 2560 because it doesn't give you the ability to change the frequency. So it's very limiting. Um, and got the time alignment, which is very fixed as well. Uh, then I did the mid bases at two, 2560 because the tweeters are big. And the mid bases actually will play low because these are actually Millie Legends, I believe. And then I did the rear speakers at about 104. I mean, I could have went higher, but it really... When the, when the DSP doesn't have a ton of control at the bottom end, uh, your performance will really... It, it's good, but it's not going to be really crazy. And then you got your subs. Now, I don't do a lot of equalization on subs a lot of times because when I look at the curve, the curve is nice as it is because of the subs in the right box. It's the right port. Everything's right. It, it sounds pretty good. So let me see if I can find a track for you and play it for you. Because this thing's got an epicenter. Wow. Let's play a track that I normally play a lot of. I'll play this track. My Soul. It's not copyrighted. Yeah, I need my space. Not bad. Really good. Why I be going ghost? I ain't trying to stay up on that wild road. Cause I can't let them take my.